So thank you uh, for this invitation. And I have a hope. And the sopas said you are not too tired, and said I enough powerful. Said I enough powerful to show you why it is so important to treat with the whole body hypothermia, and where are the risks, of course, and where are the chances? Because of the risks, we have to speak. Why uh, I will show you some aspects of the uh, extreme level of the whole body hypothermia, and. Uh, thank you also for the invitation and for the good organization here. For me, this is a very important step because of exactly 20 years and six months ago, I started with the whole body hypothermia and at first with a fever range and then with the extreme level. And one of my famous or my best teachers was <coughs> von Aden, the father of uh, Dr. von Aden, he spoke today. And uh, so uh, I hope I can present uh, some interesting aspects about uh, hypothermia and so whole body hypothermia can be a bridge uh, between different problems we see in the technical aspects and in the physiological aspects from our human body. And at first I will speak about the temperature and uh, the temperature we have Today, uh, two scales. Uh, this is the more new and modern scale. Uh, I prefer this older from our colleague Hager, and he was the founder and the chief doctor of the Biomed Clinic in Bad Bergzahlen, and a famous uh, scientist and uh, colleague. And uh, we will speak about today about the levels range from 41.5 to 43 in the whole body hypothermia. Why it is so important? I think when we uh, see what we do and uh, what was the target, so we thought some years ago every tenth of degrees uh, centigrade is important uh, to kill tumor cells so much as it possible. And so we were surprised when we listened uh, from a Russian group uh, from Novosibirsk that they realized the temperature to 43.5 and in 2012, I <coughs> installed such system in my clinic and we evaluated this step by step, but very carefully. And um, by the meeting in Budapest uh, from the International Clinical Hypothermia Society, I uh, presented my first data and it was a little bit a problem uh, with the temperature measurement. And I cannot present, not I, but this group from Russia presented data with uh, measurement points from the esophagus, uh, but not from the rectal uh, controlling, and not from the intravessal uh, check points. And so um, it was uh, different. And when we realized 43 degrees, then it was really the body core temperature. And uh, so we must be very carefully because of the side effects increase uh, much more when we are higher than 42.5. And I hope I can present my data from 1,000 treatments in the extreme whole body hypothermia um, in the, so the ASHO meeting in May next year in Berlin. And today I will give you an impression uh, from my work in the last uh, two decades. And so when we speak about uh, the temperature, then we know that we need minimum 41.5 degrees that is the lowest level you can find in the literature to kill tumor cells. And it was founded by, um, or created by Professor von Aden in the 60s of the last century, and later Obergaard described it also. But today we say it was Blackyard because of, uh, it was described from Professor von Aden. But the, the killing effect by 41.5 is only then really when you have a special metabolism and, uh, and you can create this situation by the tumor acidification and this you can realize by uh, artificial hyperglycemia, for example. And so it is very important to speak about these points because we can see when we discuss how we can treat with the temperature, maybe it's a soft tissue sarcoma. When we uh, discuss how we can treat uh, as a primary, then we know the patients died not by the primary, so mostly by the metastasis. 
And when we have a systemically treatment, uh, so, and this is the whole body hypothermia, and I hope I can show you later uh, in this 25 minutes uh, that uh, we have a lot of positive side effects, uh, that we have a systemically character of the therapy and can organize a better quality of life and maybe a better uh, response when we fight against cancer. So uh, range between 45 or 40 to 41.5 is not from interest in the human medicine uh, because the immune stimulation is lower and uh, the cell killing begins uh, in the range from yearly from 41.5. And so it is uh, important to speak about these details. And two years ago, it was also the meeting of the German Society of Hypothermia in Berlin, where it was Professor Faubel, uh, one of the famous physiologists uh, from our time. And he showed uh, from his work by the Harvard University that we have, when we go higher than 42.5, then we have such, such a much invasion of adenosine that it inhibits uh, the uh, the immune uh, system, so that we think today uh, we fight between 41.5 to 42.5. And I hope it was clearly uh, to present why we treat so. And when we go outside from the oncological aspects, then we know uh, that we have also some, uh, some success by uh, the fight against bacteria, for example, the spear sheets by borreliosis and uh, syphilis, but also in the, uh, to reduce the viral uh, loss by uh, different diseases. But in this case, such cases, it is not so interesting because of there we have enough uh, good medication. Uh, but uh, by the borreliosis, I think uh, this can be one point in future where we can use outside of the oncological aspects the extreme whole body hypothermia. When we uh, look for the results in the cancer treatment, then we have really better results from the modern oncological medication and the possibilities uh, to treat. But uh, we have uh, more and more diseases and also so half of the new patients die between uh, five years and so I think it is allowed to think about what we can do more and when we can do it safe then it is not so bad I think so and what are the alternatives uh, when we think for the pleura mesothelioma then uh, the weapons are not so good uh, the surgery is not good enough the radiation is also not and uh, it is around about ten years ago that when the group in Lübeck showed us uh, the the polychemotherapy with, uh, with the ICE protocol and whole body hypothermia at extreme level was really better than the chemotherapy alone. And so I think there is a chance also in a disease uh, and the number of the diseases goes not back in the moment. Uh, we need enough time then uh, I will be so, but in the moment not. And so I think we have different points where we can look for uh, the helpful additional uh, possibility of hypothermia. <coughs> and of course, this is also a bridge uh, between the different possibilities of hypothermia, but also in the different view of medicine. So the, the colleagues, their work uh, with hypothermia, he can be the friend of different specialists, but he can also be the friend of the complementary medicine because of we use uh, nearby the nature some possibility because of we listened in the morning uh, that is, uh, the primary item for this uh, thinking is uh, fever and the, fever, uh, the nature gave us uh, the fever and so we look in the integrative protocol with, with hypothermia uh, for lower side effects, for lower level of side effects, for better response and of course uh, also for better quality uh, of life. And so we have to check what is possible. And I will not repeat what we listened in the morning uh, uh, sessions, but um, after the fever, there was an indication to stimulate the immune system. And of course, in parallel, we have to see that we can use the temperature to 
kill it directly or indirectly the uh, tumor cells. And I was uh, happy about when I uh, listened to Professor uh, Rapaski and she showed us that by the temperature from 42 degrees, and this is what we all times really realize when we go in this level, uh, we have a good, su good success to uh, stimulate the P53. Uh, and so we have one point more uh, why we can realize uh, such temperature and that we can do it in the whole body as a systemically therapy. And so I think from the different methods, local, regional, whole body, and by the whole body, mild, moderate, or extreme, we have a good field to fight for better prognosis. And so I think it is important that we observe what we do, and so I am I hope I can present next year. Our data uh, are washed now, and we started in a prospective observation to realize 1,000 treatments with higher than 41.5 degrees and uh, centigrade. And so I know it is important that we have uh, the view with a prospective uh, method, otherwise you uh, select uh, best cases. And we know now, when we closed this trial last year in August, it was a number of 1,000, and we washed out the data, then we saw that uh, only 755 was by 42 degrees centigrade. And only, but I think it's a big number, and some years ago I met Professor Van Roon uh, to a meeting of the STM, and he uh, stimulated me uh, look for your data and present uh, this, and so I'm happy and I hope I can uh, present my data next year in Berlin. But these hundred uh, or thousand uh, treatments uh, look back for the basics of researches, and uh, so I think it is uh, to show how we can realize this. And there is different, because if we close in the moment uh, the guidelines for the uh, whole body hypothermia from the society, and so we discuss it. Um, but here is a symbolic the machine with the infrared A radiation. With this machine, we work. And this is a big sister from this small model in the back side uh, where uh, the Institute for Naden uh, presented the Aerotherm 1000. We work with the Aerotherm 2000, and so we have the radiation in the front and in the back side of the patient. And uh, this is very, very easy, uh, possible as a patient to heat up safe. And okay, older methods are not from interest in the moment, but we know also in the US it was realized by Enzermax and Aquatherm with hot steam. And by the method of heat heal in the water bus, we really as from the physical aspects with uh, infrared C. Uh, the heat heal method is interesting because of we can treat, uh, we can heat up. In a very short time, a very high temperature. We need 25 uh, to 30 minutes to realize 42 uh, degrees centigrade. And so it is one possibility maybe in the cases of autoimmunological aspects. We know uh, the immune processes are suppressed in the high temperature. And when we say, okay, this is from interesting for us, to, to treat also with a whole body hypothermia, then it is important that we have a short time uh, to overspring the region or the range of uh, immune stimulation area, and then this method can be uh, operated. Uh, otherwise, we need for the cancer, for the fight and the cancer treatment, a uh, time of metabolization. And so it is the uh, same like in the regional hypothermia, we need 60, 90 minutes uh, to metabolize in this level of temperature, and this is with this machine excellent possible, and I will show it this is safe. And <coughs> the visibility and the technical aspects we presented uh, 17 years ago in Rotterdam, and it is published in the International Journal of Hypothermia in 2000. And so it was a start point, and now we, yeah, we close the work. That is nearly my my work of my life, and so we are also a little bit proud, and I hope I can stimulate uh, also, also other colleagues to, uh, to
to look for the possibilities of whole body hypothermia, especially in the extreme level. When we see, uh, um, I repeat, it is possible, yes, it is possible, but uh, really dangerous, and we have to ask, oh, sorry, we have to ask if it's uh, helpful when we go higher than 42.5 at the moment. So our target, and this is uh, what we uh, realized, 41.8 to 42.3. In the middle, we realize 42.3, and the range is to 42.5. And so uh, the next important point is that we realize a homogeneous temperature distribution, and it is very easy to check the temperature in all areas of the body. And so as a question, if we have enough temperature, if we have hot spots, if we have cool spots, this is no question by the extreme whole body hypothermia. We have not cold uh, uh, hot spots because of after some minutes after delta x of time, we realize this temperature there we can uh, check in the body core, rectal, vesicle, or intra in, in the vessels. And so it is an important possibility. And I think uh, we have to speak about the side effects. We see um, uh, after the scale of WHO, sorry, so nearly by him, uh, we, real, we see from time to time to uh, decrease three to four is very certain and only when the patients used a lot of chemotherapy before. Uh, but to three it is in lower than three percent and very certain we have uh, enough four patients in 1,000, so it is four per mil, or 0.2 percent, um, like symptoms, like Lyle syndrome. It was not to, to, to verify, but uh, it is then really a complication, painful for the patient and with a long process to heal, um, not dangerous for the life, uh, and not uh, the patients die not by this uh, disease, but uh, we don't know why. We cannot uh, detect before. There are not signs, not markers. Uh, we uh, we uh, were surprised when we saw it at first. And every 250 patient uh, will have this. Uh, this is uh, important to know. Other side effects uh, we have never seen. Also, when we uh, uh, check the patients before, we have not uh, problems with the heart function and we have not um, uh, problems with other organs. And so it is a safe therapy, uh, this feasibility is proved and we can realize uh, this therapy and can bring our data in other trials. And also one bridge to the complementary medicine. We know that we, uh, um, that we increasing the sensitivity for radiotherapy, for cytostatics, and when we use maybe, uh, when we treat from time to time patients, they are also treated in complementary clinics and such things. And there is very often used maybe the vitamin C in high dosages. But uh, then we have also acidification. And when we accept this, then it's better to do it before and to treat in the, in the phase where the pH goes down. And so we have maybe a better response then. I will not repeat, the time is too short, all the data what we, uh, what we know about the success from hypothermia. It is only to repeat here that we see it. And of course, we have to see only one chemotherapy, this is a cisplatin substance, is dangerous and not possible to use simultan in the extreme whole body hypothermia. In the moderate is possible, but in the extreme not, because of the extreme whole body hypothermia stimulates the antidiuretic hormones, and then the toxicity increase uh, rapidly, and so maybe the patient need after them the dialysis. This is not really not the target. Asa, all other uh, 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 cytostatic substances can be used. Uh, the side effects increase not. Normally we can reduce the uh, dosage, but this is other aspect. And so uh, we, I will show in the last minutes of my presentation uh, that we see some aspects when we use the special metabolism, also the aspect of the uh, induced hyperglycemia to, to organize the uh, acidification is proved. Uh, this is a great name, Angie Lieber, and uh, the, the scientific data are good. 
I will show you one uh, trial, phase one trial from Takahashi in Japan. They treat it with the same procedure like the multi-step cancer therapy. It is proved also in Berlin by the Charité for the colorectal cancer by Professor Wust. And uh, we see a summary of the data in this uh, connection. Uh, we have 75% uh, responder and 25% non-responder. And this data are a little bit better than the uh, trial in, in uh, Germany. <coughs> it is uh, from the clinic from von Aden. And this, uh, in this trial was finally included 490 patients. And you see the different uh, tumor entities. And you can see in the middle you have also the same data you have in 70% uh, the response, uh, no change, and uh, partial. Uh, minor or complete response, and the question is why the data in Japan was better. It is the point where we started. The patients in, uh, in Japan was on a earlier point. When uh, the, surgeon, the surgery was not helpful, then they started not with chemotherapy, then they started with the therapy. And uh, the German, uh, it was from the ethical aspects, not allowed in Germany, and so we treated the patient in a late stage <coughs> after more uh, cycles of chemotherapy and um, principle un, un, not, not, to, not to treat, uh, but uh, so it was uh, hope. And when we see in this late stadium and we have clearly aspects after OECC criteria, then it is uh, to accept uh, a very interesting um, result. And from this point, we started our observation. And so I think it is um, very uh, good to know that we have uh, uh, systemically therapy with a very easy method, the, the warming up, the fever, the artificial fever, and that we can uh, realize some positive side effects also in this uh, point of therapy. And so this is the machine in original, so uh, this machine looks also in my clinic. And now we, uh, we present, uh, will present our data next year. And so we have a scientific protocol that we can say this is a safe therapy, it's possible, its feasibility is approved. And we have different data and now we can start uh, with clinical trials. Thank you for your attention. Yes. I'd like to ask, uh, how long does a single treatment last? A single hypothermia. And how long it stays on the, on the level of temperature that you described? Yeah, very it's a very interesting question. Thank you for this. And uh, one treatment is uh, around about eight hours. Uh, we have to prepare the patient. It's an intensive medicine protocol and we need anesthesia, uh, otherwise we cannot tolerate. We need 90 minutes, 90 to 100 minutes to realize from, from the normal body core to the range of 41.5. And then we realize uh, 90 to 100 minutes higher than 41.5, 1.8. And we will realize 20 to 60 minutes higher than 42 degrees. After them, we need two and a half hour to come uh, on a very natural way back to the normality and the patient has, must be observed by electrocardiogram, respiratory fraction and uh, we observe the patients uh, 24 hours on the intensive uh, care uh, range. Maybe eight hours, treatment. Eight hours. Um, as a one therapy, eight hours, yes, and after them uh, 12 to 20 hours in observation uh, with intensive uh, care. Okay, so the patient actually stays with you for two days? Yes, uh, as a patient, uh, we organize it so that the patient comes in, in the clinic uh, day one. So day two is to prepare, to acclimate, and uh, day three is a major therapy, and day four is to relax, and at least day five, the patient can go home or outside. Do you combine it with chemo or yes. radiotherapy? Yes. Mostly in your clinic? Yes, mostly we do it, and uh, only when the patient not agrees this, 
and uh, then we accept this, uh, but uh, we see really better chances when we combine chemotherapy plus. And so it's important to know which chemotherapies you can use, but there are good protocols from Professor Sigmund uh, some years ago is published. Okay, how many treatments in the, in the treatment of the patients you are using? Yep. Average. Um, we, we combine mostly with the oncologist, and maybe uh, the oncologist has uh, the idea to give the patient six cycles of chemotherapy. Then we say, uh, realize the first cycle by the oncologist, the second uh, realize uh, please with us, and then we see, we'll see how is a success and how uh, we tolerate the, the therapy. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, last one. How do you how do you measure a temperature? Are we? And, and just one more, which is uh, um, which I'd like to include. I mean, we are we are told even by uh, by other manufacturers of hyperthermia that it is the time that now it is the time for moderate hyperthermia because it is much more secure and, and lots of stuff uh, and that. And you are well one of the very few that go into uh, extreme hyperthermia. Yeah. Okay, this is true. And actually... There's uh, only one question, that's more. Uh, at first, maybe, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, when you treat with, uh, with other methods of hyperthermia, and you will combine maybe the original hyperthermia plus uh, moderate whole body hyperthermia, then it's best to start with the moderate hyperthermia and edit the original after them because of the target in the, uh, where you will have the temperature is more homogeneous and more higher. Uh, the second, how we check the temperature points, we uh, check it uh, rectal. It is uh, in the community accepted, that is the body core. Uh, but we have uh, three points more. One is axillary, uh, one is on the front side and for the skin temperature and on the back side. And with uh, contactless uh, infrared uh, check for redness in different places from the therapy uh, uh, doctor. And when uh, it is a maybe after quenue by the rectal cancer, then we use uh, intravesical temperature measurement in the catheter, included a temperature uh, point to check this by the machines, and it is described the whole time. Uh, there are not mistakes, and we, uh, we can accomplish this uh, excellent, not, not a nurse describe what the doctor say, uh, the machine do it. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you.